My name is John Malama. I am a otolaryngologist, otherwise known as ear, nose, and throat uh, physician. I practice here at Avera Medical Group in Brookings. I'm ENT or otolaryngology. What I do is mostly to do with the head and neck. The most common things would be ear tubes and tonsils, but uh, also sinus surgery, uh, including the new image guidance system that we're uh, bringing in here in Brookings. Also do uh, tumors of the head and neck, including thyroids and salivary glands and parathyroids and things of that nature. Sinuses are usually air-containing cavities inside the, the skull, and um, they typically have a normal open drainage pathway so that the uh, normal healthy mucus can uh, evacuate into the nasal cavity and as gross as it sounds, kind of go down the back and get swallowed. But sinuses can get inflamed or obstructed for multiple different reasons, and some of them being obstruction, just that the, the outflow tract is not open. But uh, there are a lot of other things that go into it, including allergies and um, exposures, genetics. Um, there's a lot more micro uh, biology as far as the type of bacteria that are supposed to be living there versus the pathologic ones. Most of the time with sinus surgery, it's going to be uh, when medications have failed, and usually there's a, a um, regimen that. ENTs often will call maximum medical therapy, but there's the definition of that is widely variable, but usually includes some sort of uh, oral steroid, nasal steroid, saline rinses, and oftentimes an uh, antibiotic course. So usually it's a little bit longer than what most people have been on for their sinus infection. But towards the end of that course, often we'll get a CAT scan and then meet back with the patient to find out if their symptoms have really resolved or if uh, they still are feeling the same as they were before. And then the CAT scan is usually um, uh, the verification tool that we use to just really see what sinuses are involved, how bad is it, and what do we need, what do we have to offer as far as surgical options. Image guide surgery is combining the patient's CAT scan with basically a computer that allows us to see our instruments in real time in relation to where the bone of the sinuses are. Um, the sinuses are bordered by the brain and the, the, the nerve, olfactory nerve, which is the nerve for your sense of smell, as well as both your eyes and, and in the back, a lot of the big blood vessels that go through to the brain. So really there's potential for a lot of complications if you get too far in, and, and uh, yet at the same time there are some air cells or areas of the sinuses that are so close to those really important structures that you really can't get as good of a result if you don't get those cleared out. So the image guidance helps us be able to see how close we are to the real critical structures and allows us to really find if there's spots that we haven't quite opened up. And then in, in addition, when you're in the middle of sinus surgery, if you have really badly infected sinuses, polyps, a lot of inflammatory tissue going on, it can have a lot of bleeding and make it harder to see what you're doing. So it just it gives us an added level of safety and also assurance that we're in the right spot. and. Um, uh, more accurate clean out. During the surgery, we have a, what we call a head frame or a, a, a reference array, something that's on the patient that's, that we can then combine with a CAT scan and, and uh, kind of fuse the image that we have already with the patient that's basically laying there real time. And that uh, allows the computer to see sort of uh, in a way the tip of certain instruments that are calibrated to the system. So. It knows how far that, is, that instrument is into the patient's nose or in the sinuses and can really uh, help be a lot more precise. With the older methods, it's not entirely uncommon to have areas that you thought you opened that were not open. And um, in those situations, it can uh, really make for a more prolonged recovery if you don't have all the infected cells open and uh, it can sometimes even require you going back to the operating room to clean that out again. But with, uh, with the image guidance, hopefully that reduces that the number of kind of reoperations you need to do. Uh, and then in the cases where they are reoperations, there's oftentimes distortion of the normal anatomy and scarring, so it's harder to tell where you're going. And it can be very easy to, to um, still miss things in revision surgery. So just more accuracy, more safety, and uh, better overall surgery in the first, first go around. Overall, they're still gonna have the same kind of, uh, uh, I wouldn't say pain-free, but, but relatively in most cases, fairly easy recovery. As you can imagine, usually you do have a little bit of bleeding and you have some you know, sensations that you typically have with sinus infections like pressure and fullness, but usually the pain isn't severe. And, uh, but I would say the image guidance itself doesn't, doesn't really affect the, the first you know, couple of weeks of recovery. It's hopefully that we can get uh, complete recovery faster. It's a pretty widely available surgery anywhere you have ENTs, but prior to 
Um, now we haven't had the capability to do it here in Brookings. People would have to travel. So it's the same high quality surgery that you can get at larger centers, but uh, without having to make the, the travel staying closer to home and being able to, um, you know, when you're, when you're recovering from surgery, it's nice to have a very short distance to drive in order to uh, kind of get back to your familiar surroundings.